in our life, no matter what's going on in the world, we have to understand he knows what he's doing. Amen? just want to say welcome to everybody. We are at SOG because we are in a typical New York winter and we have heat. <laughs> now, last week we didn't have heat. But if we have heat, I want to meet, right? Hallelujah, Jesus. Just want to welcome everybody. So, Father, we just draw together corporately now. You have called us by name. You have drawn us together online by your spirit. You are calling us. You are drawing us. You are breathing into your body tonight. Lord, we receive your breath. And when you take a breath, we take a breath. When you breathe, we breathe. When you see, we see. When you speak, we speak. Lord, draw each one that you have drawn to this video tonight. Draw them into that oneness with you as you catch us all into that realm in you that we have not been to before. Lord, we are moving through that door this year. And, and so, Father, we thank you for that, the pace you have set for every one of us. Every one of us, no matter how far away from each other we are, there's no distance in the spirit. And so, Father, enlarge our hearts tonight that our hearts can expand with truth and revelation tonight. Lord, that you would just enlarge us and give us a greater capacity to receive from you, to conceive from you, to believe from you. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, connect the dots for everyone that's watching tonight. Help them to see the markers you have laid out on their path. Lord, let your strong encouragement come to them that they might receive your breath and your spirit tonight, that they might receive and be lifted into a brand new place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it feels strange to be here after being at home for two weeks. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. All right, so I just want to recap just for a second for the sake of tying my message together tonight. When we went to Canada, we really didn't know what we were doing. We were just following the Spirit. I was looking forward to a little mini vacation, <laughs> and it was that, but it was, um, it's always on the job training. But I share with you guys the visitations that I had with the white horse and with the angel of truth that came on my journey. Well, this week I had um, a couple more encounters with them. Because these are not just one-time encounters. You've got to realize that God is always moving in your life. Even if you can't see it. Even if you can't feel it. Even if you don't understand it. And usually you won't until later. But I share with you that the white horse went with us to Canada and then back. Because Bob Jones said that the white horse would reside here in Rochester with us because um, it had left and they came here because God plans on moving in our region and our state in uh, the four city gates. And so for us, the white horse is that promise. And what is the white horse? It's, it's the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of truth and power. And the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. But the key is 
it says, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will bring you into all truth. He will explain things to you. He will teach you things. He will expound on things. Doesn't mean you understand it all at that moment. It means he will unfold it as you go. So those of you that understand what I'm saying, you know it's a walk of faith. God always takes us step by step with him. And I asked him one day about that. I said, Lord, why can't I see clear? Why are things fuzzy? Why can't I see and understand? He said, because I want you to walk with me by faith before you see. He said, most people want to see first, and then they'll believe in me and trust me and have faith in me. He said, if you're like one of those, you'll fall every time it gets tough. He said, but if I lead you like I lead the blind, if I lead you by blind faith, before you can see and understand, he said, you will trust me all the way through, and then I will open your eyes to see what you could not see. He said, I want to root you deeply in me. And so maybe there's some of you tonight that you're struggling to understand things, and you can't see very far ahead of you spiritually, because sometimes the Lord will hold your understanding. He won't let you see too far ahead. Why? Because you'll go and run after it. You'll get ahead of him. He wants you to follow him. He wants you to walk with him. And so a lot of times he will hold your hearing, your understanding, your vision, because he wants you to trust. He wants you to walk step in step with him. And that teaches us patience, but also endurance. Because if you're like me and you're visual, you'll run right after it. <laughs> And so a lot of times he'll put a short leash on you and say, no, it's time you trust and believe. Blessed are those that believe in me that don't see, that learn to trust in me and root deeply. I'm telling you, as the shaking gets stronger, those that have shallow root systems will fall over. Because you haven't learned to trust and you haven't learned to cleave to him, no matter if you understand or not. He said, I never told you to understand first before you stepped into it. He said, I told you to follow me and I would unfold it as you go. So I want to encourage you guys that, that don't understand a whole lot. You're in a very good place because he's making you rock solid. He wants you to be right where you are in your circumstance because he knows exactly what he's doing. And you will understand it later. But for right now, you have to trust and you have to look, keep looking into his face. Now, the other day I had, and maybe you guys can relate to this, I had a very clear vision of a huge wave coming right at me. And it was so fast. I mean, it was huge. It literally swamped me. Before, and all I could do was cry out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And all of a sudden, I'm drowning in this. This wave hit me, and I'm just tumbling inside the water. And um, finally, I come up, and I find myself clinging to the roof of a building. It's like a big tsunami that came on shore. And um, I'm clinging to the rooftop. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I, I looked to my left, and it's like this other building came and smacked into this building I was hanging on to. And people opened a window on the upper floor and pulled me through. And I said, where were you, Lord? <laughs> Why did this wave hit me? And he quietly said, I've been here the whole time, Sue. And you know, so many of you are overwhelmed by circumstances. A lot of times the Lord will give prophets these things because so many in the body are going through them. So many people feel overwhelmed and swamped by circumstances. And they feel like they're going through a, a crushing defeat at that moment. But it's not. Jesus is with us in the storms. Jesus said there would be storms. 
but you didn't die. <laughs> you actually rose right to the top. And so God always provides a way of escape. If we'll understand it's the journey, he's forming us in the journeys. He always provides. And he said, I've always been here the whole time. And so maybe that will encourage some of you that can't see, can't hear, can't understand what's happening all around you, and it seems like everything's falling apart. It's not falling apart. You're actually rising higher. If those big waves don't come to shore, you can't rise. And sometimes the church can't shine unless it gets really dark. She can't be seen. And she can't be seen if she stays low when she has to get up higher. And so God will bring circumstances into your life to lift you where you cannot go yourself. So don't worry about the big waves and things that are hitting you. Thank God for them because it's taking you to new heights and new levels. New floors, new windows are opening and they pull you right through. He's been with you the whole time. He's not far from you. He said, what? I'm in you. I know what you're going through. I'm right here with you. You're going to be fine. You're not going to die. You're not going to drown. He said, I'm working it all around. I'm working it out. So I said, okay. And um, so last night, I had a couple encounters. As I was asking the Lord, what's your message for the church? Lord, what do you want to say? What are you doing? We know what he's doing, but he brought back to me. So the, I was laying there in bed, and all of a sudden I saw the white horse next to my bed, and he was nudging his head like this on me. And I said, what is it, you know, to the horse? And I knew he was nudging me, and I said, what, what is it? And I felt like he wanted me to go with him. So in the spirit, I saw myself getting on him, and we took off. I mean, I'm glad I held on because it was like a bullet train. He just like was being launched from a rocket. I mean, he ran like really fast. And all these horses began to come up alongside of us, and they weren't white. They were all different colors. But they were forming a corridor, and I realized there was so much demonic opposition to what God was doing in the earth, that as he sped like a train, and I'm riding onto him, these horses were forming a corridor in the spirit for us to get to where we were going. And as we got to where we were going, there was a burst of light, and um, Gabriel was standing there in the light, and he greeted me, and there was a huge waterfall pouring right behind him. And I understood because the message when we came back from Canada was I am moving, remember what I told you last week, I am moving through my divine corridors in 2024. I am divinely connecting my people and those divine connections will release divine encounters which will establish my divine corridors in the spirit so you can go in and out more. Remember, we talked about that last week. So this is an example of that. And so Gabriel was there, and um, he greeted me. I don't remember all of the conversation, but the gist of it was, come, Sue, I have something to show you. And he took me inside the waterfall. And inside the waterfall, was a huge mountain of provision that God had stored up for his people. And he was talking about, he said, Sue, God has a supply that won't run dry. Don't be shaken by what God is shaking. Understand what he's making. The enemy has been taking, but you're going to restore and get back what has been stolen and delayed. It's going to be repaid. A new foundation is being relayed. The first foundation he's relaying is in you, in your thinking, in your mind, in the way you comprehend things. 
He has to lay a foundation so he can build upon it and open up revelation, which will release a corridor of activation, a provision for your station. Oh, I'm glad we're recording this. <laughs> that was just download for you. And so that was the short version of a longer visitation. And um, then he said this to me. He said, remember, Sue, no matter what you hear and see, remember to only follow me this year. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because last week I was telling you what the angel of truth told me in Waterloo, Canada. And I said, oh, Gabriel, you're the angel of truth. He said, yes. I appeared to Daniel and showed him what was written in the book of truth. I am a messenger to God's people to reveal the truth to them when they don't know what is happening. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And he will lead his people into all truth. Even in the current season of what's happening in the earth right now, even Daniel didn't understand what was going to happen in his land, right? But Gabriel obeyed God's command and came to Daniel to help him understand. <laughs> yes, Lord. So I said, that was you when we went to Canada. He laughed. He said, of course. He said, you have the white horse and you're following the spirit. The white horse is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. And I'm a messenger of truth. And he said, I've come to give you his message. No matter what you hear and see, remember to only follow me this year. Those who have been defeated will suddenly find themselves newly seated. The struggle is part of the journey, but it's also part of elevation. Without a struggle, you can't rise. And God's people have been so comfortable and God's people have been so um, lethargic in the cares and the busyness of this world. God is shaking things up. You're going to see a whole lot more war on every shore. But you have to understand this is the beginning of more because it's about the greater works of Jesus in the earth. Now, so this is what I told you last week, and this is an example. So then, after Gabriel spoke that to me, I got back on the horse and rode it all the way back through, and the other horses were surrounding him. And there was a great battle because the enemy does not want God's people to get understanding. Does not want you to know that God is working everywhere around your life. And you don't have to worry or be afraid. God knows what he's laying. He's laying a foundation under your feet. So then I get back to bed. And I'm laying in my bed last night. So I talked about the white horse and then... Um, so then... I said, okay, what's your message? <laughs> that was a message. But I got on my computer, and the first thing I saw on my news feed really surprised me because it was a word that I put out yesterday on 11717. It was seven years ago today. And it was called The Greater Shaking and the Glorious Lampstands Vision. And I put it on my Facebook wall, so you don't have to try and remember it. But I was really surprised because I have an archive on my blog that goes back a long time <laughs> of all my encounters since, oh my God, lots of years. And so I sat there and I looked at it. And I was amazed because this is exactly what God is doing. 
I want to read it to you guys so you can understand it's not the end. We have a long time to go. The church has a, a lot to do before everything is ready for the end. Wow, there are so many, <laughs> so many angels in here. Okay, so seven years ago today, one seventeen seventeen. I love doubles. Whenever you see a scripture, a double in the scripture, I go read it. This one is John 17, 17. It says, sanctify them, purify them, consecrate them, and separate them for yourself, and make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. That's exactly what God is doing. He's cleaning things up. God is washing America. What do you think all that snow's about? God told us the winds of change was blowing in the earth. I think you see the effects of the winds of change in every nation right now. And all 49 states <laughs> have snow or cold. God is releasing his storms out of his treasuries, out of his storehouses. Why? Because he's cleaning things in the spirit. We don't always understand what God is doing, but the natural will always mirror the spirit. Now, there is a sanctification, a purification, a consecration, and a separation by the spirit of truth. You're in a battle between dark and light, not left and right, dark and light, between truth and lies. And God is sifting and separating right now everything to bring that separation so that every person can make a qualified decision on what the truth is. That is why there is so much exposure happening. That is why there's going to be greater and more shaking. But it's not about for the purpose of bringing destruction it's about a purpose of bringing wholeness and healing and restoration. Now, I want you to hear this. So seven years ago, I had this vision. I saw the Lord Jesus standing in the midst of the seven golden can candlesticks. And those of you that have the paper, sorry, my, color, my colored ink ran out, but on the website you can see the picture of Jesus standing between in the middle of seven torches. I saw the Lord standing in the middle of them. He was dressed in white robes with a royal sash and a woven belt. On the belt was hanging a pocket watch. He held a scroll in his hand, and he looked at the scroll as he opened it up. Anytime you see a clock or a pocket watch, you have to know that you're in a time of critical time of change. It's timing. The key to every season is timing. If you know the timing, then you also know what God is doing in that season. And so he had the pocket watch on his belt. He had the scroll. He looked down and he picked up the pocket watch that hung on his belt and he looked at it and smiled. He then looked at me as I was watching in the vision. And I saw the whole room that he was standing in begin to shake. It looked like an earthquake. The seven torches or lamps shook, and their flames danced as they shook. The Lord was not moved by the shaking at all, but he continued to stand there unfazed, and I watched as the shaking increased. See, God's not shaken by what's happening in the earth. It's necessary to bring a pure birth. You've got to hear that. Shaking is necessary to bring a pure birth. Okay? So the lamps continued to burn, but their flames shook more. And the flames leaped violently as the shaking increased. 
At one point, I wondered if their flames would go out. Because the shaking had become so violent, I thought the lampstands would fall. The Lord continued to stand among them, and his face was resolute. Then I saw an amazing thing happen as the shaking came to a crescendo. The flames began to change on the lamps, on the torches. The flames changed into huge balls of atomic light, kind of like the transition from a single flame to a lighthouse light would be. The lamps had transformed because of the shaking, and great light now blazed brightly everywhere. Then I saw Jesus smile, and then he held out the scroll to me. Now, it's not finished with the encounter, but I just want to say something here. All the shaking so far in the earth has just been to wake up our generation. Because if God doesn't shake stuff, things won't get uncovered, shaken loose, get our attention. If nothing ever adventurous ever happens in our life, we get really stagnant. We get stuck in our ruts. And the Lord wants us to be set free. We don't even know all the layers of stuff that's clung to us. So what happened was, the Lord said to me, the next measure of shaking that began on January 1st pretty much happened right after New Year's. He said, I'm turning up the dial, and the shaking is now going to be another level. And it has shaken up. The whole world is looking around like, what's happening? Everybody's fighting. Everybody's arguing. Everybody's attacking each other. Nations are starting to, to rattle their sabers. We're starting to get the threats everywhere. People are starting to fight and wanting to start a war. He said, oh, you're going to see so much more shaking, Sue. He said, I'm just beginning to shake my lampstands. But he said, I'm the light that burns in my torches. It's not man-made light. It's not your natural oil. He says, if you have natural oil, your light will go out. But if you're flowing in my spirit, no matter how much shaking happens, you won't be moved. Everything else will shake around you. Things will fall all around you, but what do you say? A thousand, ten thousand around you will fall, but you won't be moved. He said, my living torches are about to be seen around the world. He says, I'm the atomic bomb of Gilead. I'm the remedy for the healing of nations. The more I shake off of you, the more increase of my light will be seen. That's why I'm shaking the church. I'm shaking believers. I'm shaking ministries and businesses and executives and everything. I'm going to shake it all till all the chaff falls off, till all the crust falls off. How do you get barnacles off a, sh off a ship? You have to scrape it. Use a jackhammer on it or whatever you got to do to get those barnacles off. They accumulate over time. You don't even realize it till you lift the boat out of the water. And once you lift out of the water, you're like, oh, my God, look at all that stuff on the bottom. You weren't even aware. And it wasn't because it was your fault. It's just because you were in the water. And you didn't come out. Periodically, you come out and you go, see, accumulation. Then you have to get in the sandblaster and get it all off. And the enemy has been condemning some of you because you're struggling with barnacles in your life and chaff, and dust, and dirt, and pollution from the world. You haven't done anything to mess up. It's because there's accumulation that comes from being in this natural world. And the winds of change is beginning to blow the chaff. And he said, suddenly you're going to see clear what you did not understand here. Because my winds are getting stronger. Now, we told you at the year's end that the winds of change was going to get really, really strong. Intense winds. We, can, we are in that. 
Now, the Lord said, go to Revelation 1, 10, 10 through 20. This is Jesus standing in the middle of his people worldwide. He is the Lord of his body. Revelation 1.10 says, I was in the spirit, wrapped in his power on the Lord's day, just like I've been when I'm laying on my bed resting, all of a sudden the angel will come and get me, or Jesus will catch me up to show me something. He said, I was in the spirit, and I heard a great voice, like calling of a war trumpet. I think we're in the season of shaking a war. He was saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. Write promptly what you see. To Smyrna and Pergamum, to Thyatira and Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea, Ephesus. I turned to see whose voice was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man. He was clothed with a robe which reached to his feet, with a girdle of gold about his breast. His head and his hair were like white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes flashed like a flame of fire. His feet glowed like burnished bright bronze, and it was refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and his mouth, out of his mouth, came forth a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in full power at midday. Full power. We just read Proverbs 4.18. Out of his face was the shining of the full day. And we just read Proverbs 4.18 that we're stepping out coming into greater light in the dawning of that full day, right? It's the work of the Spirit. His feet glowed like burnished bronze, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. Okay, I read that. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as if dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the ever-living one. I am living in the eternity of the eternities. I died, but see, I'm alive forevermore. I possess the keys of death and Hades, the realm of the dead. Who has those keys? Jesus and you. Right, therefore, the things that you see, this is what Pat and I do. We write what we see and we tell you. Write what is. Write, therefore, the things you see and what they are and what they signify and what is to take place hereafter as to the hidden meaning of the gold. As to the hidden meaning, the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven lampstands of gold, the seven stars of the seven angels, messengers, of the seven assemblies and churches at that time in the earth. And the seven lampstands were the seven churches. Every church is a lampstand, just like you are individually. But together, when we assemble, we're a collective lampstand. We're a torch. And there's an angel assigned to every church, every gathering, every home church, every ministry, every collective community. You have angels assigned to you. And Jesus is speaking to the body of Christ right now. He wants to give understanding of why you're in such a battle, why things don't make sense, why you feel shaken up inside, why you feel like the enemy is trying to smother you or defeat you. So Revelations chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. This is the letter that was written to the assembly in Ephesus. It says, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars, or the angels, which are the messengers of the seven churches in his right hand. 
who goes about among the seven gold lampstands, which are the churches. They represent his collective body. He said to them, I know your industry and your activities. I know your laborious toil and trouble. And I know your patient endurance and how you cannot tolerate wicked men and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles, special messengers of Christ, and yet they are not. And you have found them to be imposters and liars. Well, that's true for our day. There's a lot of fake ones out there. I know you are patiently enduring and are bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not fainted or become exhausted or grown weary. But I have this one charge to make against you, that you have left and abandoned the love that you had at the first. You have deserted your first love. And what that means is you've gotten a little hard, a little cynical, because trials and tribulations kind of make you that way. It kind of toughens you up, but you lose your sensitivity to him because of the troubles. He wants you to cultivate that tenderness. Get that, your heart soft again, pliable, teachable. Don't let trials harden you so much that your love gets hard. Keep it, guard your heart. Now, he says here, remember then from the heights you have fallen. That's interesting to me because that's what keeps you from going higher is when we lose our inner fire. When our hearts begin to lose that excitement and that tenderness and that zeal because things are getting hard. And we have to steal ourselves to try and make it. And he says, no, your heart, you're losing your, your fire is going weak. He said, spend time with me. Keep that intimacy. That's what keeps you from going higher. That's what it says here. Repent. Change your inner man. I love this. Look at this. Repent. What's that mean? Change your mind. Change the inner man to meet God's will. In other words, stop what you're doing right there when you recognize your fire is kind of struggling. Your love you're having to steal yourself because you're plowing through some junk. He said, recognize, shift, look where you are. Change your inner man. Stop right there and yield. This is how I change my inner man. When I don't know what to do, I stop. I close my eyes, I take a breath, and I just yield. Lord, at this moment, I've lost my view. I'm struggling. I don't know what to do. But I know the key is you. So I just close my eyes. I take a deep breath, and I just say, Father, I yield to you. In this moment, in this circumstance, in this situation, I breathe. I yield. Shift me, Lord, right where I need to be. Suddenly, I catch myself going higher because I was being weighed down by the mire, by the stuff in this life. And it says here, so as you yield your inner man to meet God's will, the Amplified says, that's verse 5, and then do the works you did previously before you got stuck in the muck, right? when you first knew the Lord, or else I will visit you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you change your mind and repent. So it's not about deliberately messing up. Sometimes we don't realize that we're weighed down so much that we can't function. We take a nosedive and we get in our funks, I like to call it, or we get depressed or we get hopeless, or we get overwhelmed. And he says, take a deep breath. Yield, and all of a sudden, we start to rise again. He wants us to understand that we can't carry the things in this world. That's his job. 
And we have to let him do what he wants and trust him in the process. So he said, if you don't turn to me, what's going to happen? Your lampstand will get too heavy for you and you'll have to let go of it. Your torch, you won't be able to carry it. You won't be able to plow through. He says, you're not to plow through. I'm going before you. You're to follow me. And so this is Sue's amplified version of the amplified version. Now, he said, but yet, in verse 6, you do have this in your favor and to your credit. You hate the works of the religious system, the Nicolaitans, what they are doing as corruptors of the people, which I myself also detest. Verse 7, he who is able to hear, let him listen to and give heed to what the Spirit says to the assemblies, to the communities of believers, to the pockets everywhere, to the churches, to ministries, to him who overcomes in this struggle and who is victorious, I will grant to eat from the fruit of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. There is a fruitfulness that we have not known and understand that is available from his hand. And the enemy is trying to oppress the body of Christ so much and cause us to struggle that our light goes dim. He does not want our oil to last. And so the winds of change is here to shake more. God is going to shake the crud off our lives, off our thinking, off our understanding, off our just living in this world, the accumulation we don't even know we have. He's going to shake it so much, but it will not put our light out. It will actually cause our light to get untethered. It's like barnacles coming off the bottom of our boats. And all of a sudden, we rise, and our light gets so bright, we, won't, we will be surprised. Lord, just quicken this to me. Sue said that, he said, you just talked about how, how that you won't be able to keep holding the torch. You'll have to put it down. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. When Rick Joyner had his experience in the third heaven, and Jesus had the torch, listen to what Jesus said. He said, the torch is the light of my presence. If I was not close to you, you could not hold it. If you drift from my presence, it will become heavy. If you drift very far from me, you will have to lay it down. Then someone else will pick it up and carry it. It is yours to carry for as long as you stay close to me. So I just wanted to go and quicken that to me. What Sue's saying, again, same thing. It's just another way, but it's the same thing. That if you, if you don't stay close with the Lord intimate every day, you cannot continue to carry the torch. Right. Because he is the torch. Right. It's your intimacy, your relationship with him. He's the oil. That fills your lampstand. That fills you, but you have to keep it lit. And communities of believers will get stagnant and dead and dry if they don't keep their intimacy among each other, if they don't cultivate the relationships, if they don't learn to love each other and work together and need one another, then their oil also runs dry and the church becomes dead. And then everyone falls away. But those that continue to press into the Lord get brighter and brighter. Why do you think the churches are so empty everywhere? Why do you think there's not much hunger? Why do you think the inner fire of the church, they've lost their desire because they're caught up in the struggles of this life. They're caught up in the affairs of this world. They're caught up in the emotions of the hour. They're caught up in the burdens, and they're being tossed to and fro. They're running everywhere looking for the truth. But who is the truth? 
the Lord who is in us. That's why when that wave hit me, and I was tumbling in that tsunami, and I mean, I was tumbling under that brunt of that water, and I popped up later and grabbed the roof of a building. I said, why did this happen? Where are you? And he says, I've been with you the whole time. We have to understand God is shaking everything. But Jesus said, that which cannot be shaken is the only thing that will remain. What's going to remain? His lampstands. The whole focus of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not a revelation of the Antichrist and of the wicked nations of the world and all their plans and plots. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ working among, in his people in the earth. It's about him walking among his people and what he's accomplishing in their lives in the times of darkness. And God is, is beginning to form release mantles to those that will carry them to the end, not just for a short season, and when it gets tough, we lay them down. He says, I want faithful stewards. I want faithful harvesters that will not be shaken. And 2,000 years later, his words still ring true. It's our turn. What are we going to do? Are we going to cave every time there's another wave? Are we going to cave when we don't feel good one day? Are we going to struggle? It's a challenge for every one of us. We must trust in him who is in us and with us and for us and working things out. He will never be unfaithful to those that trust in him. I just want to, for a minute, it's okay, so I want to go back to, uh, yeah. can I have your, your, your paper here? Yeah. What you, uh, I don't know where you, where you were, where you read at the beginning yeah. about the divine corridor, the, the but, okay, what, you, Different things led to different things. Okay, so winds of change carried us there. That's actually written here is easier. Angel of truth. Okay, there it is, okay. Yep, divine connections. Divine there it is, okay. All right, let me read this. The Lord quickened this to me. This is very interesting. I don't have full understanding of it, but I know it is connected. In me saying that, I am moving through my divine corridors in 2024, the Lord said to Sue, at the trip. Divine connections will form my divine corridors. Divine encounters, oh, I'm sorry, will, will form divine corridors, and that has to do with then it will bring you into an established divine oh, encounters. Yeah. Okay, my divine encounters. All right. Connections and counters go All right. Now listen to this. This is a prophecy from six years ago. When what it was is that Jeff Jansen, Lord's prophet, gave us his ring that the uh, that resurrection angel Emma gave him. Wisdom is better than the ruby, 50 carat ruby ring. And, and it's that painting of that angel over there on the wall here, like an in American Indian. That's how the angel appeared to him when he was at our church. But listen to this. He said, when this angel came... He said, the angel came through a corridor. Mm -hmm. Then he said, there are four corridors the Lord showed him over America. And one of them also is in America, but leads to Canada. Mm -hmm. And we were in Canada when Sue got this word yeah. from the Lord. Yeah. 
and I don't have full understanding of this, but I know that there's something. He says there's a, a big, very big corridor that goes up into Canada and connects Canada also with the Great Lakes. And Todd Bentley, when he's having his, had his heavenly experience, he talked about he was taken under the Great Lakes, uh, Lake Hur Huron, and he was actually taken down there to the bottom of that lake, and God showed him different things down there. But he also, when he was down there, the Lord gave him and showed him a key, the keys of the kingdom of Matthew 18, 18 through 20 was given to him in this experience. But he said that this great lake connected to the trip he was going to be doing up in where we were just with him in Canada. Yep. So all I'm saying is, I believe this is part of the fulfillment of what the Lord had shown when Jeff Jansen was here, when the, he, hadn't, he hadn't seen the angel Emma, for, he said for years, till he appeared, the angel appeared to him when he was at our church, June 10th, 2018, six years ago. But he talks, uh, but that, that this resurrection angel, he said, went through the divine corridor. He said the Lord showed him this, that there was, a, there was a corridor that this angel was traveling and, he, and even bringing those manifestations of all those jewels and all those supernatural things that happened. But it didn't happen until, but the angel always came through he, the, a divine corridor. He also called it a gate and it would move over different areas. And the angel then would go to that area, but he would always come through the divine corridor I don't have full understanding, but the Lord told me to come up and share this because it's connected to Sue's message tonight. And even because he mentions here about the corridor, about Canada, about the Great Lakes, and all, so all these things were mentioned even when we were up in Canada. Well, if you remember last week, we began to talk about this. The Lord showed over our trip there. He says, I have been establishing divine connections between peoples, between groups, between ministries, between churches, between businesses, between cities and regions and nations. I am, it is my time to unlock these things. And so I establish the connections. And then I give you encounters. I give you revelation. I begin to move you by my spirit, by in understanding. I begin to prepare you for what I'm going to do. And then when we're all ready, then he opens the corridors so that we can move into what he's been preparing us to do. Now, there's always a four, four corridors, because there are four faces to the cherubim. There are four cardinal directions. It's all the fullness of his plan that he has written for every man in every land that we have to understand. Now, the other thing is I didn't share is that the Lord is that when the resurrection angels came here, when Bob Jones was here in the, in the 1998, and then Bob told me two years later that, how, that they would come back and they would bring to pass what they had spoken to him in God's timing. And he said that's how it works with the angels. And then... Um, I had the experience, because Todd Bentley's been having the experience with the angel of divine connections, and Sue just mentioned this word, divine connections. And I had seen that angel back in 1995, but it was that revelation God gave to Bob about the timing with, to do with the resurrection angels, and God saying again, see, it's tied to these things with the resurrection angels. Yeah. this thing with the corridor. And when we were, I, I just looked it up, and we were up there with Todd. Sue shared this word up there in Canada when Todd had her come up and that was the day that, that Todd and I had both seen the resurrection angels at the same time yeah. at 2.49 in the afternoon per the call of, of Rochester Luke 2.49 but Lord, what the angels had told Bob. So I don't have full understanding. I just wanted to mention this because these, all these things are connected. They all go together and God's we're walking out but obviously part of it is the fulfillment 
of what Jeff had been seeing six years ago when he was here. And in going back to when he got all those supernatural manifestations of the, all those stones and everything to do with when this angel came, one of the resurrection angels. So when the angel came to us in Buffalo on our way to Canada, I shared this because the Lord started speaking to me about Waterloo. And I looked up the meaning of the name Waterloo. Because if you understand what the name means, you also understand what the assignment is, what God wants to do. So I looked up the definition of Waterloo in dictionary.com, and it means a decisive and crushing defeat. Places where there has been a great defeat, or people where they've had crushing defeats that have lost hope or faith or vision or understanding and are in a in the mire because um, they're stuck. And I understood uh, the mission because in Canada and America, that's what it is. The, the church has gone through such, um, they're in such a state of hopelessness and visionless that we can't see past our circumstances and we struggle. And he says, you must get a vision for your nation for your city, for your region, for your life. You must get a vision, my vision. And he said, I'm going to show you. My wind is going to blow you. And God began to take us in different places. And that's when Gabriel, the angel of truth, came, and he had his ephod on. Remember, I shared this out of Daniel 10:21. He said, no matter what you hear and see, remember to only follow me this year. Those that have been defeated will suddenly find themselves newly seated because God is going to blow on you and shake you and debarnacle you until you start rising because all these things are keeping you down. They're weighing you down in your mind, in your thoughts, in your heart, in your physical body, in your struggles. And so... He's moving through these corridors now, and he said this year, 2024, is a corridor into more, because there's, there's a whole lot more. It's not the end. It's a corridor. And we have to allow these connections that God is reconnecting us. And he's causing a lot of businesses to shift, ministries to shift, believers to shift, to move, to relocate, to stop doing this and start doing that. And, all kinds of shifting around. Because sometimes you need a new connection. You need to disconnect from the toxic things and move into freshness to restore your own mind, your own heart, your own life. <clears throat> so then, once you do, he starts bringing revelation to you, understanding to you, fresh vision. All of a sudden, you feel the wind blowing inside, stirring your heart again. Your fire starts getting activated, your desire, your intimacy. And then suddenly, he begins to move you into the new. So we're in, in that transition now, down the corridor. But you can't stop, and you can't look around and get in fear and worry. Stop worrying. Who, who do you think is shaking the earth? God is. God is shaking you and shaking everything around you. Why? So you will be the solid pillar that other people around you need. Because you're the only Jesus they're going to see. And if you're falling apart in this little struggle right now, what's going to happen when it shakes more? Now, I want to read the last paragraph I wrote on the post on my wall. He said here, the transition period that we have now crossed into now is going to purge and strengthen the people who Jesus is walking among. That's you and me. His body will not be broken. You're not going to stay broken. You're in transition. Just breathe. You're not going to be lost unless you want to be. But you will stand by him while everything that can be shaken is shaken 
and the world and the chaff is finally removed, or I would like to say fully removed. You know, you can't really see the, the kernel of the grain until you get the skin off. All the nutrition is underneath that skin, that chaff. The greater the shaking, the greater the glory that will be revealed. The glory comes, and we are all going to be changed and enlarged by it. The enlargement will flow as we trust in him who leads us all to obey his commands. He's not calling you to understand. He's calling you to obey his command. You must trust his voice, and you must follow him blindly, blind faith, without seeing, to gain ground. And then, as you move in his momentum, you'll start understanding. Stop trying to see, and just yield and move with him, and then you will understand later. He said, it is his intention, oh, let me go back, it is by his hand the deeper shakings will come. January kind of shocked everybody awake because we had such a quiet Christmas and New Year. You ain't seen nothing yet. You better ground yourself. It is his intention to use the turbulence of the years ahead of us to transform the church into the greatest of all lights in the earth. Such grace and such glory has not yet been seen, but is soon to be revealed. It is time to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches and to draw near to your first love and to allow the turbulence of great change to remove everything that hinders his light. Great shaking and great awakening and great glory are at hand. It is time for the lighthouses of the church to brightly stand across every land. If you're in a room full of light, you can't really see anything that's different because it all looks the same, right? The more we look like the world, the more the, church, the world can't see the truth. The body of believers was never called to be like the world, sound like the world, taste like the world, smell like the world, dress like the world, talk like the world. Jesus came and shook up the world. <laughs> he shook up the church. Even his own disciples couldn't understand him <laughs> at that time until after he rose from the dead. And the Holy Spirit gave them the understanding later. But when Jesus begins to turn down the dim switch on the wall and begins to dim the lights, and it's not quite so bright, and then he turns it down, down, down until it's dark and you can't see a thing, that's when the greatest light will be seen. And right now, a lot of believers don't know what to do because they can't see. They can't hear. They're shaken up. They're caught up in the turmoil and the emotions of everything they see on media and things coming out of people's mouths. And they're shaken. He said, no, look at me. The Spirit of Truth said, no matter what you hear and see, remember to only follow me. You cannot gauge where you are by looking around. You must look into him, and your light will be found, and your walk will be sound, and you will be rooted all around. And you will be that fruitful ground that will bear fruit for me. And then those around you can see, because you're the light, and you're shifting the atmospheres. You're shifting people's lives because you're getting brighter because you're letting go of all the things that cause you to struggle. The lights are going to go out. But don't be struck full of fear and doubt. 
suddenly you're going to see, because all the light that is in you brilliantly is going to be burning everywhere. And people that did not understand you, because they were looking at everything else, all of a sudden, when it's really dark, they're going to look at you and go, oh, now I see. <laughs> and you're going to be the light of sanity in a time of insanity. Because what they did not understand will become clear when there's nothing else around them but darkness. And then they're going to see the light shining out of you. So drive your roots down deep. Don't worry about what shakes. Keep looking into his face, and he'll be looking through yours. And stay in his pace. It came to me, look up corridor in the dictionary. Corridor means passageway connecting. Now that lines up with divine connections brings also the divine corridor. So there, I just wanted to read that because it, this is the meaning of a corridor, a passageway that connects things together. Remember how we told you that that we are the bridge generation that is called to bring revelation. That's why the prophets seem like way out here to a lot of people. They don't understand why you, what you're talking about. 2024 is not just a door. It starts out as a door, but it's a corridor. I remember last year, last year he talked about the Lord had opened a door here in SOG and when we went through the door, it was actually a corridor, and there were many other doors inside that corridor. Yeah, May 19th. Pat, Pat, see, he remembers every date. Yeah, the Lord told Pat and I that in our ministry, SOG, and what God's called us to do at that time, we were in phase four, and that we were entering a new corridor, because there's four phases to every ministry, every purpose, basically, that God's called you to do, you're like shifting gears, one, two, three, four, and we were in phase four, but he said, come up here, things are popping now. I've really been looking to the Holy Spirit to understand this tonight. It just can't see what you just say. You said phase four. And Jeff said there were four corridors. See? So there the Lord's starting to open that up. See, phase four is that is one of those is the, there was four corridors, he said in this nation in one of them that well, also one of them of the four led into Canada. So the Lord's beginning to, I think, give us understanding because the thought came to me a couple of minutes ago before Sue said this, this Holy Spirit, about that experience with that corridor, with that angel to do with the fourth phase. So again, this is, so it's start, we're starting to get understanding. Yeah. So remember, inside the corridor is many doors because there's many operations of the Holy Spirit, many activities, many assignments you're going to go through back and forth, in and out, in that corridor, in that time frame. So, as we were going from America to Canada, the Lord was showing us that corridor that is open between nations. There's going to be assignments. You're going to go in and out on assignment. You're going to go here and there and everywhere. You're going to have to follow the winds of change. You're going to have to follow. You're going to have to let go of things, and then you're going to have to do other things. And suddenly you'll find yourself in the flow of the wind and he's carrying you everywhere and he's doing it and no longer you have to do it. You're just watching him move. And so we're in that. We're being carried along by the winds of change, by the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of truth, who is now flipping the light switch on for people. All of a sudden they're shifting. All of a sudden they're, they're getting free. All of a sudden they're... They're coming into new understanding. All of a sudden, everything is connecting because the divine connections are bringing divine revelation and encounters 
which will move them down their corridor that they need to move into to come into the light, to come into freedom, to come into where God was taking them. So all of these things is a sign. We're on 2024 is not just going through a door. Everybody's talking about that. He said, understand it's a divine corridor into more because there's more beyond 2024. There's many doors. There's many decades left. There's many doors. And he said, keep moving. This is only a corridor. You'll be fine. I have assignments for you. And he said, your lampstand is important. Keep your relationships tight. Keep moving in love with people. Keep being fruitful among each other. Value your relationships. Guard your heart. Keep your light bright. Don't walk by sight. Keep your love bright. Don't struggle to understand. He said, follow my hand. Follow my plan. Follow my spirit. Stay in my footprints. And you have an easier time. You won't get all sludged down. Because I'm telling you, it's going to shake more. You were born for this time. Oh, the Lord just spoke to me something else. Thank you, Lord. He just said to me, he said, also how this connects is that, see, the fourth phase, Sue saw that vision on May 7th, which is when the healing revival began when Todd was here on May 7th last year. And then May 19th, she saw the second one where she saw the angel I saw in the dream back years before that, May 19th. And being the fourth phase, well, what the Lord just said to me is he said, but I said, how does it connect, Lord? He said, it connects because the angel of truth that appeared to Bob Jones when he was here, see, when he had seen those resurrection angels, he said that the angel of truth, when he first appeared to him, said, I was with William Branham. See, so, and Sue's talking tonight about the angel of truth. See, I, I, I see, but this is how the Holy Spirit works. He, it's like a puzzle, and then he suddenly get, opens it up and gives you understanding of how the thing works. But, there, but that's how it connects that, see, even with what Sue's talking about, her message tonight about the truth, from the angel of truth. An angel of truth is who appeared to me going to Canada, which is Gabriel, which comes to understand. When we're praying about understanding, he comes to break us through into understanding um, because that's, he's a messenger to those that are praying about their scroll, their role, what's happening to our nation, what's happening in the world. And so while we were in Canada in the Hamilton, Toronto, Toronto area, Hamilton there, Waterloo, um, um, what's the other town? Ajax. Um, I had this encounter. It wasn't, it, it was a vision, but it started out, I heard a news broadcast, audible, loud. I heard a newscaster talking. He was doing a news program. He interrupted the news, whatever was going on on the media, and he said, I have a, a news. He broke in, and he was giving this broadcast. And he said, there's a been a major storm, and there was a storm that hit this campground, and there were 45 campers that got destroyed and it just wrecked everything, right? And he said, but it's really interesting because there's one camper that didn't get destroyed. And it's floating down the Ohio River. This is what I hear. And suddenly I see the Ohio River. It's like it, it, the storm just like the river flooded everything and, and brought destruction. But there was one camper that was didn't get sunk or destroyed, but it was floating down the river. 
And it was a little egg camper like Pat and Mice camper. And I was surprised. And I watched it float down the river and then I saw people along the shore that came down this boat ramp and they snagged the tongue of the trailer and it looked like a winch and they winched us to shore, the, the camper. They pulled it ashore and they opened the door to look inside and Pat and I popped out <laughs> in the vision. I'm like, what? But I understood the parabolic message was, there's great more shaking, and many are going to be shipwrecked in their faith because of the turbulence, because of the storms in the natural and in the spirit. And vehicles are your ministries. And he said, but there are some that will be carried down the storm of the Lord that will be fine, and they will float down my river, and then I'll pull them to shore right where they need to be. But this was the Ohio River. Now, if you remember, before we went to Canada, I had two dreams that we were swimming in at midnight, Pat and I, across Lake Ontario to go to Canada. And both times, I had that twice, two times. Both times, I'm like, Pat, why are we going to Canada at midnight, and why are we swimming? It's cold. Why are we swimming at midnight? It's dark, and you can't see nothing. Of course you can't. You have to, you can't. You have to go by faith. You have to follow the spirit. So we get to Canada, and we had a blackout, and it was pitch black. But while we're in Canada, now we're going down the Ohio River in flood stage. I'm thinking, okay, is Ohio the next direction? But um, I felt like the Lord said, I didn't know what the Lord said about that question, but I understood that William Branham's ministry had to do with the sign of the Ohio River. And it was the beginning of the greater works of the Holy Spirit that were going to be dis that were going to be seen in a turbulent time. That it's going to birth the divine. That would be a sign. <laughs> I, I think it just came to me part of the understanding. Because what the Lord, the Holy Spirit just said to me is he said, but he said, but what happened with William Branham on the Ohio River? I opened the portal, the corridor over, his life. over him when he was on the baptizing the 17th person, the 17. Look at that. The 17th person he's baptizing in the Ohio River. God opens the corridor, the portal, literally. They see it. It opens up. Branham sees it. And the star of Jesus comes down in the opening, the portal. And then he speaks audibly to Brother Branham. And, and 4,000 people, it's in the newspaper the next day, it appeared in the natural. They all saw it. That's what Branham, literally, so... I'm telling you, the Lord just said it to me. He said, see, I opened the corridor. I, see, I opened that passageway, and the star came down. And then, he, then he, Brother Branham talks about how then it closed up, and the star went back, and the whole the sky closed. He said, it was like a, he said it was like a square that actually opened up in the sky. He saw it. And then he said, and then the, the star came down. Then he spoke, and everybody saw the star. And the angel of the Lord spoke to him audibly out of the star. So... And this message was 1, 17, 17. 17. See, God does these things because there are signs about the time. John 17, 17. Sanctify them, purify them, consecrate them, separate them for yourself, Lord, and make them holy by the truth, for your word is truth. And so these 17 are just markers on our highway for us to understand that God has a plan, we're in the center of his plan, and we are to keep our eyes on him and his hand to understand. And also the number 17 in the Bible means perfection of divine order. Number 17 in the Bible means perfection of divine order. So the more that the world gets out of order, the more that he brings his order into disorder and changes chaos into peace. So you don't have to worry. God's not worried. In the shaken, 
as he's walking among the lampstands, he wasn't worried at all. As a matter of fact, he shook it more. More and more and more and more until those torches began to roar. The flame got so bright, it was like an atomic light. And it's the atomic bomb of Gilead. Because why is there no healing for my people? Why is there no remedy? And God wants his people to understand he's the remedy. He knows what to do. Trust him. He will guide you all the way through. And the world around you will begin to say, why are you not in fear? Why are you not worried? Why are you have no lack? Why are you not panicking and depressed like the rest of us? Because we keep our eyes on him. And we trust him all the way through. And that's your purpose. And this is the message tonight. Keep your eyes on him. You're in a corridor in 2024. It's going to shake all the way around the outside, but you're stable, right? And you don't even feel it. As you're walking down that corridor, you don't feel nothing but him. There's war all around the corridor, but you are fixed and stable walking all the way through. The horses were all around the white horse as we were riding down the corridor to see Gabriel. You are the stability of the times. The church is the stabilizing factor in the earth. If there was no Holy Spirit or no church in the earth, there would be utter darkness and chaos. But the church is the stabilizing factor because the Holy Ghost works through the church. The Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth, and you will be fixed and stable, unshaken. As you're moving down 24, everything else will be chaos and war. But you have to understand, when you get to the other side, you're going to see why he did it the way he did it, and what is the next plan. We have decades to go. You've got to get a long-term vision. You're here for a while. So stay in the truth. Trust the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. You're going to be fine. You're going to prosper. You're going to thrive. There's always a Goshen in Egypt. You're not going to die before your time. If you will cling to him and let him realign your walk. It says here, where is that? Change your inner man to meet God's will. Whatever he tells you to change inside, do it. And suddenly everything will straighten out. And it will surprise you because all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will accomplish more than you could have in the last 20 years. Suddenly it will all fall together in place and it will be by his grace. Hallelujah. So before we end, we'll just take the offering for the Salvation of God Church. Go back and watch it again. Take notes. Read the encounter I put on my wall. Jesus walking among the lampstands. Those of you that have been watching our meetings the last couple of weeks, you understand you're tracking with us because we've been slowly marking things out as we get these ongoing revelations. And that just came to me, the thought also just came to me, when Jesus was walking amongst the lampstands, in his right hand were the seven stars, which are the angels of the seven churches. And the angel of the Lord was in the star that came down of the 17th person with Branham and spoke to him audibly. But there is a star, see, the star to do with the angels. And you all have angels all around you. They're with you. They're assigned to you to help you. And if you'll walk in the spirit, you'll hear them. And they will be able to help you. And if you get stuck, they'll, they'll break you loose. <laughs> so be open to angelic help. You all have angels with you. You have the Holy Spirit. You have Jesus. He's inside of you. He goes through everything you do. He's with you. And everything that happens to you is for his reason, for your season. You're in a new season. You're not just going through a door. You're in a corridor. You're going to be fine. Just keep 
him in your sights. Just stay close to him. Keep your heart right. Keep that love flame, your intimacy. Keep it burning bright every day. Do what's right in his sight. Now, um, so the offering, you guys know the links are in the video. Um, we thank you for partnering with us. We thank you for your financial support. It helps us stay open here, obviously. It helps us continue to give you the word of the Lord as we get it. It helps us to also uh, go other places that God assigns to us. We pray that these messages have blessed you. There's different ways you can give through PayPal or Cash App or Venmo. Uh, we also have Zali, and you can give even through Facebook Messenger and Givelify. There's lots of ways to give. You guys know. Um, sow where the Holy Spirit tells you to sow. And most of all, let go of what you think you know, because it's Bob Jones said to us, said to Pat, you know, I, I always thought I knew what was going to happen. And that every time I got to that place where I thought I knew, I realized I didn't know at all. I was wrong. And so it's okay to be wrong. It's actually refreshing. Because then we get unstuck. Because sometimes we get stuck in what we know. And um, you got to realize God has a bigger plan than you do. And so we thank you for your support. We thank you for your encouragement. Pray for Pat and I, and we'll pray for you. So, Father, we just, we just breathe. <laughs> and we let go. And we yield to the winds of change flow. As the winds get stronger and they begin to last longer and you begin to cover nations in snow, even nations around the world that have never had those everywhere. Father, you're doing a new thing because we're in a new corridor and we have decades to go. Lord, wash everything clean. Lord, sandblast the chaff off of us. Lord, scrape the barnacles off our rear ends, Father. Lord, get us to where we're sensitive to you. That every little shift and every little nuance of your heart, we begin to pick it up. We get softer. We get more tender. We get more sensitive. That suddenly we just begin to say, what was that? What's going on, Lord? What's this? Because we're starting to pick up how you feel, what you think. And we begin to sense you in new realms and dimensions that we've never opened up to before. Lord, unlock us more. Lord, unlock us all. Those watching online tonight, Lord, unlock us. Lord, lift us, shift us, cause our flames to get brighter and brighter, stronger and stronger, that no matter what shaking goes on, our roots are deep and our lamps get brighter and brighter and brighter as you move us down the corridor of 2024 into the decades that will bring even more. We're not... Our eyes are not on the war. Our eyes are on you. You know what you're doing in the earth, Lord. You created it. And you have still a future to unfold. But, Lord, I thank you that we are. It's your story that will be told. I thank you, Lord, for your grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ shines and everyone watching tonight, that falls on everyone listening tonight, that your grace just suddenly shifts them into a broad and spacious place where they can get strong, where they can get healthy, where they can begin to feel nourished and fed. Lord, that they will get strengthened instead, Father. 
Lord, let your winds begin to blow stronger. And Lord, let those divine connections bring divine directions and divine reflections and revelation that will bring activation for their station so they can move down the corridors of your timing into the next thing they're called to do in the next place they're called to go that they will just follow your flow father and they will know that you have written it for them so i thank you holy spirit you are the spirit of truth and you are sending angels of truth to us to help us understand to help us shift and to help us stay in pace with you and to bring understanding to us when we need it and to help us understand each door that will open up down this corridor of 2024. We will not go in the wrong door at the wrong time, but we will stay in divine timing. We will stay in your footprints as you step it out inside of us and we step it out inside of you and we step it out together as a body because your head is on every one of us and you will direct us by the spirit of truth we thank you for your grace so we just say grace 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 to this place grace 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 to this place one last thing I want to say as we finish up tonight. Now, this is for our region, but you might have one for your region. So you need to do a little research. But I think it's a message for all of us, no matter where we live. There's a book that was written for our region by a Glenn Gifford, and it's called Times of Refreshing. And it is a historical summary and uh, documentation of the history of visitations and revivals in our region starting back in 1656 all the way up to 2000 and i've had it for a couple of years but the lord began to speak to me this week to get it out and he began to talk about the seed beds of awakening and revival that have been sown into our cities and region and even into America, and even into Canada, and even in other nations, you guys watching from other countries, Australia, and wherever you are, Korea, you have a seedbed of God's words and the things he's moved in the past and the promises that are still waiting to come to pass. And he said, I want you to read the documents for your area, and I want you to begin to call forth the seeds in your seedbed that now is the time of prophetic fulfillment and to begin to call forth the seeds in your seed bed to begin to come forth. That the promises for this generation must have germination so that there can be a manifestation. And the germination comes through intercession and prayer of calling things that are not yet as though they are coming forth. And so this is our book for our area. See, it goes way beyond Finney. This goes way back to the 1600s. And maybe yours goes back even further. But I challenge you to begin to look into the seedbed of when God moved before and begin to pull those seeds into that corridor into more of what he wants to do in the future. Call them forth. Call forth the promises of God because the church has the right to call forth by faith those things that are not yet so that they can be. So this book, um, those of you in my region, if you're interested, get a hold of me. This is $20. I only have four. <laughs> but I really believe it's a sign, and it will give the church vision and that they will lose their hopelessness when they begin to see that God's been laying a lot of seeds over the last, what, 300 years, 250 in our region, 
I wasn't even aware that this much, when I moved here, I thought it was all about Finney, and the Lord said, no, it goes way back deeper than that. All those seeds are still there waiting to live. And so call forth your region's seeds. Lord, you're not done yet. Lord, you're going to bring to pass everything you promised. You're coming to reap a harvest. And some of that harvest is in the seeds in your soil that are dormant. Now is the time. A prophetic fulfillment is time. Bring those seeds into the corridor with you. And so I thought it was interesting is, as they were leaving Egypt, they brought Joseph's bones out of Egypt with them. Sometimes you have to bring seeds, not your old junk, but you have to bring something with you to plant it in the new soil. So um, we'll see what happens. But I think it's a, a sign to get a bigger vision that there's a whole lot of the greater works of Jesus yet to be displayed as the shaking gets stronger and it darkness gets darker we're going to see a great light can you just be praying now i just got a prayer request from uh brian minor about his wife linda she has to have a, a, the uh colost colonoscopy to find the source of the bleeding she's going to be in the hospital another day or two so we just ask pray for yeah so, Father, we just thank you that Brian and Linda are right on time. There are hidden things that have been dormant for a while, and you're going to finish your works inside them, even in the physical bodies. Lord, you're the physician. You're the healer. And these things that have been hidden and been dormant for a long time, you're dredging that up because you're going to sew it up and finish it up. So we thank you for healing. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for direction. We thank you that everything that's hidden will come to light because you're going to make it right. We thank you for your perfect plan for Brian and Linda right now. We thank you for perfect wholeness, that this will not continue to be an issue, but it will be brought to finished. It will be finished so they can move on to the next phase, their next phase, down the corridor of their days that you have for them, in Jesus' name. All right? We love you guys. Keep moving. Trust. And let God break it out, in Jesus' name.